Hallelujah. And I believe there's no, you know, comparison of one, really from one service to the another. It's all what we put into it. Amen. And when we come expecting, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I believe that God will do great things for us tonight. Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 18. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. I, I just encourage everyone to really, you know, I talked about Jacob today and and how he never let go. He held on until he received his blessing. And I, I really believe that's what God is looking for us to, tonight and, and in our lives. That we will really grasp hold of the Lord. And that we will see these strongholds be broken in our families. I want you to know the devil, he's fighting that all the whole way. But if we hold on to the Lord and we hold on to the rock and the God of our salvation. I want you to know he's going to send down his spirit and he's going to touch lives and these chains and these strongholds that we see in people's lives. They're going to be broken. So I'd say don't let go of what God has done for you. And if he's stirring you up to pray, please, amen, keep on praying. Keep on seeking the Lord. Hallelujah. He's going to answer these prayers if we're faithful. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 18, and I'm going to start reading at verse 28. Praise the Lord. And it says, Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life. Everlasting. I want to read that for verse 30 again. And it says, And who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your Holy Ghost. We thank you and praise you for your sweet presence. And Lord, I pray that your presence will come down and renew us tonight, Lord. Fresh fire from heaven, Lord. Let the glory of the Lord, God, fill our hearts tonight. And most of all, God, let us get a revelation of your word. God, as we speak forth the word, uh, Lord, I pray that you would give us understanding. And give us, Lord, an understanding of the blessings and the favor of God. And Lord, when we will be faithful to you, Lord, uh, you, Lord God, will not leave us without, uh, but you you will fill us with your glory from on high. Lord, I pray, God, that we would hold on tight to you, for we know there is nothing else in this life but you. God, I pray, use me and hide me behind the cross. For, Lord, I speak, Lord, I want to speak for the words, the anointing, and the power of the Holy Spirit to touch our lives and to bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. I'm reading here, if you go back and you go through this chapter, this is, um, you know, you can go through and read about uh, the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and, and all the things that, you know, you go down the list and, and, and what he was lacking. He, he had all these good things in his life, but he was still lacking something. And God, Jesus spoke to him and told him that you still lack. And this is what you got to give up. Isn't it something how today that that's what keeps us and that's what keeps us from the power of God and keeps us from receiving what God has for us because we're not willing to give everything up. Amen. We've got to give it all up for Jesus so that he will pour out uh, his power and his presence in our lives. Uh, I am thankful tonight as Tanya was sharing some of the, you know, the memories and the things 
hands as, as little children. And I'm thankful also, hallelujah, that I was raised to hear the gospel, to hear the truth of the gospel. And I'm thankful tonight that I'm still here. Uh, and I'm not only here, but I'm giving you the word of God that will change your life. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that's what we've got to do uh, until we surrender it all to God and we pick up, as Jesus said, if any man will come after me, he said, let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me. See, there's one thing that we've got to know, and it's something today. We're living in a world where it seems less and less commitment and more and more to where we mix in the world and we mix in what we want to do and we try to serve God all at the same time. I want you to know it don't work that way. God is looking for us that we would lay everything down in our lives and we would allow him to pick our life up and he will do great and mighty things for us. Amen. He will do great and mighty things when we surrender our life to him. Paul talks about it in Galatians where he says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. Hallelujah. If you are a child of God tonight, uh, you've got to lay down what you and your desires are and the flesh. And you've got to say, God, I'm going to surrender my all to you. And I'm going to follow you all the way because I don't want to miss out on the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. I don't want to miss out on one blessing from the Lord. I know a lot of times we we kind of take the back seat, you know, or or you know to say, you know, there's all kinds of comical things they say about those that sit in the back seat or sit in the in the back of the church. No, I want us to be ready to receive of the things of God, to be open and willing to allow the power of His Spirit to come down in this church house tonight. Uh, and not only in our lives, when we allow God and we lay it all down, I want you to know He's got good things in store for me and you tonight. Amen. He's got good things in store for us. But there's one thing that we've got to do. We've got to be committed and we've got to be sold out for God. Amen. I sang that song this morning. I'm not for sale. Amen. And I truly believe it today. We need a church instead of it just being, you know, something to where we have God on the side and we do everything our way and we fit God in where it seems comfortable. I want want you to know that's not a surrendered life to God. It's when you give your all to Jesus Christ uh, and you come to the altar and you say God here I am. I lay it all down and I want to follow you all the way. Uh, I don't want to miss out on one blessing. Uh, I don't want to miss out on the good things that you got in store for me and I surely don't want to miss out uh, on my soul to receive the blessings of the Lord tonight. God wants to for us to leave it all as Peter declared here in the scriptures. He wanted he wanted Jesus to know. He said, "We have we have left it all and followed thee." You know, you can go back through the scriptures and you can read, you know, there is ones that where he just come and he he spoke the word to them and they didn't have this excuse or, you know, this to say. No, they didn't speak a word. They just left all that they were doing and they began to follow the Lord. Oh God, give us a heart like that. Uh, that that we will be tried and true that we will be committed to the very end uh, and we will say for at all costs Lord help me that I will follow you with everything that is within me Amen. you know I think of of you know things in my life down you know through my life and how God has taken me you know I truly believe as a Christian and I was sharing with someone you know you in your walk with the Lord you know there's steps 
with your maturity and your relationship with the Lord. I'm not what I was when I was 14 years old or even when I was 20. No, I keep growing in my walk with the Lord. I keep maturing and I say, Lord, don't let me go backwards into those baby stages, but help me to keep on pressing forward to you to where I can little bit, whatever it takes, Lord. I'll lay it all down and I'll say, Lord, I want to give my life and my all for the kingdom of God. Yes. See, you know, you, you have the saying, you know, you put all your eggs in one basket. And that's sort of what the mindset, it, it really, it, it, it moves me tonight when I think of those. And even those in the church today, we can't get a mindset to where we're all focused on the things of this world. And we're just focused on this life. I want you to know, yes, God will bless you in this life. And he will give you abundant blessings when you are committed to him and you're faithful to him. But what you've got to remember, it's not just what you have uh, you've accumulated and what you have done in this life but it's what you have uh, in store on the other side and what you have done for Christ hallelujah that's what it's all going to come to I was reading there in Proverbs where it says treasures of wickedness profit nothing but righteousness delivereth from death I want you to know when you lay down your life, it says you will pick it up. God will pick it up. When you say, Lord, I'm done trying to do it my way. I'm done trying to, to serve you my way. I'm going to allow you to come down in my life. And I'm going to allow you to penetrate my heart and to penetrate my mind and my spirit so that I will be sold out for you. Sold out for Jesus. As um, Tanya was sharing a little bit there. I can remember as a little girl. Maybe you remember. I couldn't remember totally. And Shannon had to help me. I knew a little bit of it. But I, I remember the, the man. Brother Kelchner. He came to this church. And, and all the churches. A lot of churches in this area. And he had that, that map. It was kind of like a map of your life. And it was called... I think it was called living life in the light of eternity. So, you know, it was more so to focus what your life was really all about. It's about eternity. It's what you have done. And, and I'd look at all those, those pictures and I'd look at all those things. And boy, I want you to know, it put a fear in my heart. Dear God, I don't want to be left without God in my life. I want to have a revelation of what it means to lay it all down so that Jesus will pick up my life and he will use me and I will be effective to reach out and to touch someone else's life. Hallelujah. And the same for you here tonight. That's what God wants to do in each and every one of your lives tonight. He wants you to be changed and he wants to work in your life so that when you lay it all down, hallelujah, he will come in and he will pick up the broken pieces. And I want you to know he'll put them back together. And just as the song says, he'll make something beautiful out of your life. He'll make something beautiful. We've got to realize we leave it all behind. As Paul declared in Philippians, he said, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency and the knowledge of Christ Jesus. I have suffered loss of all things and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. Hallelujah. I want you to know when it's all said and done, the only thing that's going to matter is that you've got the Lord on your side. Amen. And that he's walking close beside you. And that he is your prize. Hallelujah. That's what Paul declared. He goes, I reach for that prize of the high calling. Which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. And my Savior who died for me. Yes. 
We've got to realize that it's not the things down here that's going to count. And Jesus was trying to get that across to his disciples. And even if you read it on down as he declares about, you know, how he's going to have to go to the cross and suffer great loss. But he says, I'm going to rise again. But if you read it down there in the scriptures, it says, and they understood none of these things. And this thing was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. I want you to know what we need to day is a revelation and an understanding of the knowledge of God. I don't want it to be hid from me. I want to see it uh, bright and clear. Uh, I want to have a vision just as, as I preached this morning about Jacob. He saw God face to face. Uh, and if there's anything we need in this land today, we need to have a revelation of who Jesus is and what he wants to do for each and every one of you tonight. But a lot of times, there's that, there's that wall or there's that obstacle that's keeping us from it. Jesus said, and you might as well say, he says that it's worth a hundred times more than you could ever have down here on earth. But he says even when you lay it all down and you say, I'm going to pick up the cross. And I want you to know when I stood behind this sacred desk and I preached the word of God, I knew that it was the power of God that it came down on my life like never before. And I want you to know I feared it greatly and I wanted to wait in the presence presence of God and I wanted to walk in the will of the Father. I didn't want to walk away from what he did in my life. No. See, a lot of times there's a lot where God comes down and touches their life and transforms them and then they get up and they leave and they let it go. Don't let it go tonight. Let the power of God, let his spirit come down on you and be sold out to God. I want you to know what's profitable for the kingdom of God. Jesus said it in the scriptures uh, that if we would lay it all down and we would say, Lord, I'm ready to give my all for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. He declared it to the the or to the Israelites from the very beginning. If you read there in Deuteronomy, he said, "Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee." How many like it to go well? Amen. I like when things go well. When it's smooth and smooth sailing and everything seems to flow. And when everything gets to, you know, out of joint and, and things aren't going right, uh, we've got to get a check in our mind and in our heart. Uh, and we've got to see that we've got to follow the Lord. If we follow His ways uh, and we know His ways, and I want you to know the only way you're going to know His ways is if you pick up this book and you read it for yourself. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You allow God in His presence uh, to come alive in you. And you allow His glory to penetrate your life. When you allow Him, yes, we come into the house tonight to hear the Word of God. That's like, you know, that extra boost in your spiritual walk with the Lord. But this is a daily thing that needs to be in your life every day. Amen? You need to pick up the Word of God and you need to read it and you need to know how to live your life uh, according to the way the Lord wants you to live so that you will be blessed and His blessings will not only be with you as Jesus said in this life uh, but it will be with you in the, into eternity. Hallelujah. We were thinking of all the, you know, the things that you know, there's all kinds of blessings that come our way and things that last. I, I want you to know, I want the things that last. Amen. Right. 
You know, we were talking about that, you know, things that used to be made, you know, it would last longer, you know, furniture or whatever it is. It seems like those things, they, they would last forever. And now you get something and it's, you know, you got it a year and it's already broken down and it don't work right. Uh, I want the things that's going to last for eternity. Hallelujah. I want to store up treasures in heaven. Uh, I want the blessing and the favor of the Lord to be upon your life and to be upon our lives tonight so that we can take it all the way with us. Hallelujah. We allow that power and his spirit to come down. Paul talked about things that were profitable. Godliness and the power of his spirit as Jesus said here. It says, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. Blessings in this life, but I want you to know more than you could ever imagine that is waiting for us. Hallelujah. As we were singing that song, that new song, in that great triumphant morning, I want you to know we need to get our mind off the temporal and we need to get it on the eternal. Hallelujah. Get it on what God wants to do. And as I was sharing with someone the other day, you don't let nothing get in the way of the, your soul and your relationship with Jesus Christ uh, because it's all that counts here tonight. Uh, Jesus said, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? You can have it all down here in this life, uh, but it's not going to count uh, when you stand before the God. Hallelujah. When you stand before your creator, the only thing that's going to count uh, is what you've done for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Shannon had it on, and I don't know what channel they were sharing the, the FFA, and, and I was amazed at the, how big it is, you know, the, this organization and all these young kids. I think there was like 66,000 that had come and, and was registered. And, and, and all the things that they do for these young people. And I, I thought of really of all the organizations that are out there and all the time that is spent. And I know there are positive, you know, organizations that are helping our children. But then I think of how much we could take the things that God has given us and the blessings and if we put them to the spiritual things. Oh, how much more progress profitable they will be for our lives, that they would be for our families, that they would be for our children tonight. I want you to know our children need the Lord. Yes. Our children need the Lord. The other night I was at, at Tanya's and, and Jeremy and Becky came by. They were out you know, collecting candy, and, and the kids came up with their, their little costumes. But I, I thought of the children. I thought of all the kids, not just them, but I do. My heart is for my family. Your heart is for your children and your children's children. Dear God, that's why we've got to show them the way. That's why we've got to be committed. You know, I thought the other day, you know, and I say, you know, in the day, you had people that, and I'm thankful for you that are here tonight. You're committed. You're faithful. And I want you to know this church don't continue without your faithfulness. And when you're committed at all costs and you say, I'm not going to just do what I feel, but Lord, I want to be directed by you and I want to be led by you. Amen? Amen? But be committed. Boy, I want you to know that's missing in this world today. 
I think they were sharing how, what was it, was it the schools or, or, or jobs that they were trying to, to cut the hours because really, you know, they're not really working anyway and we'll just cut the, the shorter days for people because they might be here but they're really not doing what they're supposed to be doing. I thought, my goodness. Uh, we were just talking about that the other day. When I, you know, when I was a little girl, there was, you know, some, you know, you, you, you had some, some drive, you know. I was taught, you know, I can remember that we were at someone's home and, we, and they gave us a nice meal. My dad would look at me and say, get up and do those dishes. Get up and, you know, help out a little bit. You know, it, today it's like we just, we're just like sitting around waiting for someone to tell us to do. No, you got eyes to see. Get up and start working. Get up and start doing something. Take some initiation and say, hey, what do you want me to do? I'll get up and I'll do it. Uh, I'll follow you. I'll serve you, Lord. I'll do whatever that you want me to because I know that I'm in the right place at the right time. And you'll pour out your blessings on me. See, that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to take the initiative. He wants us to, to say, hey, I'm willing to be all that you want me to be, Lord. I'm willing to do, and I say thank God for each and every one of you here tonight. God will not leave you without, but he will pour out his blessings upon you. And not just in this life, but in the life to come. Hallelujah. That's what it says in 1 Timothy. It says, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. We've got to hold on to this thing. Hallelujah. We've got to give it all that we've got. And I know sometimes that's hard. And I say, Lord, give me that boost to keep on pressing on for you. And I say, Lord, help us just to keep on working until you come. I think of all the things that God has done for us. That he sent his son. He sent his son to die for you and me. So that we could have life. So that we could have it not just to say like, but have it more abundantly, beyond what you could ever think or imagine. I want you to know he wants to continue to give that to each and every one of us tonight. Look to the Lord. Look to him and his power and his blessings. As it says in Psalm 68, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Aren't you thankful tonight for the blessings of the Lord? And that means he continually loads us up with those blessings. I say, Lord, keep on pouring it down on us in this little church house. Uh, let the blessings and the favor of the Lord and every demon of hell must flee in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let there be a true spirit to say, Lord, as Peter said, Lord, we've left it all. And we're going to follow you, Lord. And Jesus will remind us just as he did Peter. If you do that, hallelujah, you're going to have those manifold blessings. There are going to be so many you won't be able to count them all. Those blessings will be for you in this life and in the life to come. Hallelujah. Because that's what it's all about here tonight. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Let's stay.